my name is Christian, and thank you for watching. If you are part of the LGBT community, you're watching this video. God has led you to this video, and we are going to pray that God will reveal the truth to you. But let's start with the beginning to get a to get the perspective of of what God has to say about this. So we're going to Romans. We're in Romans chapter one. And we're going to go from let's start with uh, verse 18, because we're going to get a foundation of, of, of this stuff, this uh, these sins and stuff. So. All right, uh, verse 18, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. All right, so for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. He, so clearly he's not saying wrath against men. It is the ungodliness and unrighteousness of of men that's where his wrath is revealed who hold the truth in unrighteousness so that's verse 18 so when you go for the wrath of god this is this is this is god's personal emotion god's personal emotion without regard to sin with regard to sin all right then you go it's revealed from heaven all right, this anger originates with God. All right, against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, God must unnaturally, unlaterally be opposed to sin. Okay, God is opposed to sin in every way you could be opposed. He hates sin. Who hold the, the truth in unrighteousness, who refuse to recognize who God is and what God is. All right. So I'm reading the, um, the the study notes from the expositor expositor's uh, study Bible, um, best Bible you can get, um, King James version. Um, I'll do a video about that um, individually, but let's get to uh, um, verse 19. Okay, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. All right, so this speaks of the universal object uh, objectivity knowledge of God as the creator, which is more or less in all men. For God has showed it unto them means that his signature is in creation. So we are all created, right? We are created by God. Things are created by God. All right, he is the creator. There is only one creator, that is God. We are the creation. Things are the creation. All right? So we have this knowledge that we are created by the creator, which is God Almighty. All right? So let's go to verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. All right. So this explains verse. So for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. This explains verse 19. Being understood by the things that are made, creation demands a creator, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The creation tells us of all eternal power of God and is obvious to all. So, it should be obvious when you look at the human beings, the animals, the earth itself, space, the clouds, the trees, just the food, the water, just everything. All right? This was created by the Creator. So, it's obvious that there is a Creator, and it is God. All right? So, now we go down to 21. Now, once again, we're setting, I'm setting up something. I'm setting up um, what God, how God feels about sin, all sin, okay? So just, so let's go. Um, because, so verse 21, 
Because that, when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. This is apostasy. So, if men do not understand God in the realm of creation, they will not understand him in anything else. So, neither were thankful. Refusing to honor him resulted in a lack of gratitude for his gifts but became vain in their imaginations, presents the only direction that fallen man can go, considering he was rejected, he has rejected God, and their foolish heart was darkened, speaks of rejection of light. All right, so verse 22, professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Does this all sound familiar? Lays waste to all the so-called wisdom which is not of God. All right, we're going to 23. And change the glory of uncorruptibility, uncorruptible God, into an image made like corruptible man, into birds, into four uh, four footed beasts, and creepy things. This presents the sin of the ages and points not only to the heathen of old, but also much of the modern uh, fake Christians of today. Into an image made like corruptible man, into birds, into four-footed beasts and creepy things, proclaims the degeneration of man, which is the opposite of evolution. Let me say that again. And into an image like to corruptible man, into birds, into, fo- into four-footed beasts and creepy things, proclaims this proclaims the denigration of man, which is the opposite of evolution. All right, so here's the results of apostasy. Uh, apostasy, sorry. <laughs> All right, let's go to verse 24. Okay. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Now, here we go. Verse 24. All right. Wherefore God also gave them unto uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, not merely permissive, but God judiciously delivered them over to dishonor their own body between themselves, speak of every speaks of every type of immortality, immorality, I'm sorry. Who ch- okay, verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creator of uh, the creator more though the creature, I'm sorry, the creature more than the creator who was blessed forever. Amen. So who changed the truth of God into a lie refers back to verse 23, which speaks of spiritual and sexual uncleanness and worshiped and served the, the creature more than the creator. This refers to man worshiping the creation of his own hands, which means that he is worshiping something else than himself, who was blessed forever. Amen. Should have been translated blessed two syllables because it is referring it refers to the one doing the blessing, in this case the Lord. All right, so verse twenty six. For this cause God gave them up to gave up gave them up to vile affections, while their own women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. But let's go back to here real quick. So, um, you notice, so God gave them up, gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. So these lusts were already in their own hearts and God's giving them, giving them up to that. These people who refuse God, who refuse the truth. All right. They refuse, they refuse to know who God is and what God is. All right. So now you see the results. Um, so verse 26, for this cause, God gave them up to <clears throat> vile affections. The Lord removed his restraints and therefore gave them unimpeded access to their desires. So before this time, God had restraint over people. He, he didn't allow them to go to go all the way with their lust and their desires. But because of this rejection of, of the rejection of him, the rejection of Jesus Christ and him crucified, 
Because once you reject Jesus Christ and him crucified, this is this is the result for you. This is what will happen. Okay? The the restraints that were on you are now removed. So now you have an unpeated access to your desires. For even their women did change the natural use into which is against nature. In short, speaks of uh, uh, lesbianism. Okay, there's your lesbians. And like, okay, verse 27. And likewise, also the men. All right, homosexuality. Okay, living, leaving the natural use of the woman. All right, this speaks of the sex act which is performed between the man and his wife, burn in their lust one toward another. All right? Raging lust. Men with men working that which is unseemly. Okay? Specifically uh, specifies its direction, which is total perversion, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their heir, which was meat refers to the penalty attached to wrongdoing, okay? So here we are. Here we go. We're in this. All right, verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to reprobate mind, to do the things which are not convenient. All right, so this carries the idea of the human race putting God to the test for the purpose of approving or disapproving him. God gave them over to a reprobate mind. Light rejected is light withdrawn. All right. To do those things which are not convenient, which are not fitting. All right. So when you have men with men, women with women, men wanting to be women, women wanting to be men, women wanting to be with men and women, men wanting to be men and with women, when women saying they're men and men saying they're women and so on and so on. These are things which are not fitting. These are these this is not the way. God created man and woman so man and woman could be married and that that's it. That's God's way. All right. So when you go against God, these are the results. All right. So we go to twenty nine being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, mal, uh, malignity, and whisperers. Um, and then he just, uh, so let's go, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents. So let's go 29 to 30. So now, um, these things listed are the end results of forsaking God, which is the reason for all strife in the world. All right. And also, um, so if you go to 32, who knowing the judgment of God, in essence, this is saying, do your worst and it will not stop us. OK, that's what that's what the people are saying. All right. And then you have. Uh, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. All right. So verse 32, we're talking about divine judgment implied. So not only do the same, but have the pleasures in them who do them. Proclaims the result of the reprobate mind. All right. So if we go, if we, then if we went to chapter two, um, we just go to the first verse here in chapter two. Therefore thou art inexcusable, man, whoever thou art that judges, for for wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself, for thy judges do the same things. All right, so now we go to um we go to first Corinthians chapter six, verse nine through eleven. Um just goes on uh, uh nor abusers of themselves with mankind. Um, this statement is in regards to the LGBT, um, Leviticus chapter 20, verse 30. If a man also lie with mankind, meaning if a man also lie with man, as he lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Um, they shall surely be put to death, for their blood shall be upon them. Leviticus, this takes place in the Old Testament. So in the Old Testament, before Jesus Christ came, you had just the law. 
and the law had no mercy for sin. There was death in sin. When Jesus Christ came, he was the fulfillment of the law, and with him came mercy and grace, and you can have forgiveness for your sin. So there's a difference between Old Testament and New Testament. Old Testament is the law without Jesus. New Testament is Jesus, the fulfillment of the law with mercy and grace and forgiveness, the ability to be forgiven. All right, so that's New Testament, Corinthians, Old Testament, Leviticus, New Testament, Romans. For this case, God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change that natural use, which is against their nature. And these are other scriptures. Um, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. Um, then we go to Jude, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities, uh, cities about them in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. Um, set forth an example of suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. That's Old Testament. Um, so in Sodom and Gomorrah in Old Testament, that was uh, pretty much what's going on now, and, will, and it will become even worse. Uh, during this time, men and women not only, men didn't, not only did men lay with men, women with women, but well, they were also laid with animals. Um, they would do all. They would do anything perverted that Satan could come up with. All right. So we have other verses here. So, um, so we say all that to say this. All right. Let's we say all that to say this. God hates sin. God will not accept sin. Period. God so loved the world that he said he sent his only begotten son to die on a cross so that we could be saved so god hates my sin when i sin god hates my sin but i can have forgiveness because of jesus christ and him crucified when you have jesus christ as your lord and savior you can have forgiveness. Okay? But let me say this real quick. The only way you can be saved by Jesus Christ and Him crucified is by God the Father drawing you to His Son, acknowledging this drawing, and then accepting you are a sinner in need of the Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the faith God gave you. Faith in what His Son did for you on the cross. Then you can become saved. So, right now, what Satan is really making a push on is trying to pervert the word of God. You'll hear people of the LGBT saying things like, Jesus loves everyone no matter what, and it's okay. You could do whatever you want to do. But that is a lie from the devil. The devil is lying to you. God hates sin. He loves you. He loves you so much. That he sent his only son to die for you. And he wants you to come to him and be saved. God will not accept sin. He will not. He hates sin. Alright? This, this is what we have to understand. This is all sin. So, right here. When God calls this an abomination. The LGBT an abomination. Alright? What? Abomination, what does that mean? That means the most grotesque, the most disgusting, the most vile. That is that is just the worst. It's an abomination. Because what Satan does, Satan always goes against God. He always wants the world to go against the ways of God. So God says, I created man and woman. So Satan says, let me pervert and corrupt what God made. Let me have men and men and women and women and so on and so on. This is a perversion of all creation. This is a this is a very um very serious thing here. So God created Adam in his image. He took a rib from Adam, created woman in man's image. And this is the creation of God, man, woman. Satan comes in and he ruins it. He has 
influenced and led people into abominations. So you'll see um, fake Christians will accept any form of sin. They'll embrace it. This is, once again, this is of the devil. These people are not Christians. These are devils claiming to be Christian. Um, you'll also see fake Christians. They'll do protests. They'll say um, they want all LGP, LGBT people to die. They want them to be hurt. And, and this, this, once again, these are not Christians. These are devils claiming to be a Christian. God is not a hateful God. God. God has no hate towards us. He hates our sin, but he does not hate us, the individual. He hates our sins. So a real Christian would not say those things to, to, to people. What a real Christian says is to the LGBT community, I pray that God Almighty reveals his son Jesus to you. And by this truth, you will see the sin you're in and the need of the Savior, Christ Jesus. And through this faith in him, through the grace, you will be saved and delivered out of this LGBT life. So right now, you have the world. And the world, once again, is led by Satan. And the world always goes against God. The, always. Satan is always the opposite of what God says or does. And that's what the world does. So the world, their father is the devil. And their father leads the world into doing things. That's why you see it's such a big deal where they're trying to convince everyone that they should be a member of the LGBT community. And when you are of the world, when you don't have Christ Jesus, then this is the kind of world that you live in. This is the kind of world that you have to deal with and be a part of. And so it's no good. It's a life of sin, life of abomination, and it's no good. So when I see somebody that is in the LGBT, I don't think to myself, oh, I hate them. Oh, I hope they die. Oh, I, I hope they get hurt. When I see them, my soul cries out for them. I say a prayer right then and there that God would, would deliver them, would, would touch them, would lead them to his son, and that they would see the truth. And that they would be saved because what a testimony it would be, a testimony they could give. And, and thank God Almighty that there has been former LGBT that have been saved, that have been delivered and give testimony. So, but Satan, he he's a liar, a deceiver, and he will do all that he can do to lead who would be led into a lake made of fire where they will burn forever and ever. And I don't want anyone to have to do that. It's not God's will that anyone should die lost and go to hell. It's not his will. But we have free will to choose what we will believe. Okay? And so, this is a... Uh, very serious um, situation going on around the world and in the country. And the one, the one other thing I want to say about it is, um, let me get my thoughts together real quick. 